Matthias, founder of the Chrono Research Lab. Our mission is to provide easy access to vintage maps in order to gain insights to human history and cultural heritage. The development of the Chronoscope has started six years ago in 2017 as the Chronoscope Hamburg. Uh, those days we started with just four maps. Today, it's more than 4,800 maps fully georeferenced, coming from more than 66 libraries worldwide. The user interface is English and German. This webinar will explain how to use the chronoscope to browse, zoom and study all the wonderful details for these old maps. Now I would like to present the user interface to you, so let's open the chronoscope. Uh, first, a quick overview. The tools of the Chronoscope are arranged along the edges of the browser window, so we have the main toolbar on top, with the title of the current map always displayed, as well as the year when the map has been created, so we are looking now at Italy in 1782. Other tools here are um, provide access to all the other maps in the database. On the right, we have the View toolbar, to adjust the uh, appearance of the background map from dark mode to light mode and vice versa. We have also a satellite mode that can be enabled. Um, the three buttons and controls down here are for showing and hiding the map as well as adjusting the transparency for the map to see both the, the background and the, the old map at the same time. Um, by the way, the um, other commands in Chronoscope have always have also um, a keyboard shortcut assigned. That means you can either press the button or you can press, in this case, the space bar uh, to trigger the same command. So if I press the space bar, the map hides and shows. And for the sake of this presentation, uh, the keyboard uh, shortcuts, so the press keys will also be shown at the bottom center of the window. So if I change into the set mode, I press the S right now for here, S like satellite mode. I press now the S, I go into satellite mode, and if I press the D for dark mode, I change the dark mode to day and back to dark mode. So um, it's, it's, it's really convenient and, and speeds up the usage of the chronoscope once you get used to using the keyboard shortcuts as well. In the bottom right corner, we have a search command where you can go to any town or city in the world quite fast. Um, bottom left, you have the usual controls for, for zooming in and zooming out. And once the map does not show up uh, with the common orientation, which is the north on the top, uh, the compass will indicate the different orientation and you can click the compass to rotate the globe back to north uh, top of the window. The controls above the zoom controls is the memory bar. So the visited maps are collected in the visited maps selector. I open it right now, but because we've just visited one map, it's just Italy for now. We will see many more maps here during this webinar. Um, you can store certain positions um, and compare locations and map easily with these memory dots. And you also have a pin command that prevents the default behavior of the chronoscope, which is only one map, one old map is displayed by default. And once you open another map, the previous map will be hidden. Um, if you want to compare two maps, you can pin a map and overrule the default behavior. That means then you have two maps and can compare them easily by, by clicking um, somewhere on the map and the other map will come to the front. I will also demonstrate this along the webinar. Um, okay, so for the next sections, section of this demonstration, I will go through the functions one by one. And we don't really need the headspace of the browser, so let me remove the header right now. Okay, 
Um, this is the chrono cursor, by the way, this yellow disk. I will explain this uh, a little later, but we are still waiting for one additional um, toolbar that will show up in a second. Okay, um, the main toolbar starts with the outline mode, the outline and filter mode. I click it now. Um, that means for all the maps in the chronoscope, a uh, yellow rectangle will be displayed on the map. So right now we have 4,900 maps and out of them are 3,700 visible uh, on this uh, section of Europe. If I zoom out to the entire world, the 100% uh, of the maps, which is 4,905 maps, are visible right now. This is pretty crowded. Um, it's also a little bit uh, hard really to comprehend and to find a map uh, that you want to see and search and inspect in, in further detail and zoom in. But I want to show this right now because this is the, the whole set of the available maps that come from more than 66 glam institutions or so galleries, libraries, archives, museums worldwide and that have been georeferenced uh, for the chronoscope. So just zoom in somewhere right now. We are here in, uh, in, in Mexico. Where's Mexico? Here's Mexico. Hello. And find just one map, for example. So this map is not a rectangle anymore, but it's georeferenced to the best of the underlying geography of uh, the real area in Mexico. Um, I close this outline view, so all the um, yellow and orange rectangles will go away by closing the outline mode. And uh, meanwhile, we've visited two maps at least. So opening the visited maps panel right now uh, shows that we are right now somewhere in Mexico and Italy is still here. So let's go back to Italy and let's continue adjust the transparency a little, little bit and, and continue with the um, tour around the tools. So first was the outline view, second is the search command, um, which is using the current viewport. So it shows the maps out of the 4,900 maps that best fit the current area that's being displayed um, in, in this main maps view. So I start the, um, I open the find maps command right now and get a collection of maps that fit the area of Italy of the Mediterranean Sea. So here's a rather old one and you can see some sea forests are in deep, deep trouble, for instance. This is from, well, approximately the year 200, um, a map. Of course, not the original from those days. No, no, no paper has really survived. No paper maps have really survived from this area, but it's a replica from, from really an, an, an old ancient map from the Mediterranean Sea. Um, open the search again. And maybe go to, to this version of Italy, it's from the family atlas, which brings us also to the next command, which is the atlas feature. It means the 50, little 50 um, indicator says that this is one out of 50 maps that are taken from the same atlas. And once I open the atlas, I see all the other pages from this atlas that have been georeferenced uh, for the chronoscope. So it starts with the with the UK, um, Ireland, areas of the Netherlands, France, Italy, um, Greece, India. So it's, it's really a world atlas called the family atlas. And I can call any map like Switzerland, for example. And so the, the group section, as I said, is a collection of maps or sheets from atlases that belong to each other by, by any means. If we go back to the first map, first map of Italy, then here's only a two. So only two sheets of this atlas have been uh, georeferenced for the chronoscope. 
I open the atlas, it's two pages, one for Italy, the other for Poland. And I hit the B for going back into the history. This was the other atlas. I open the atlas again with the 50 maps. So they are ordered as the atlas um, have ordered the maps in its book. Um, so it would be nice to really see which areas of the world are covered by this atlas. Um, and that's the next command, that's open everything at once. So open all the pages from the atlas, all the 50 sheets of maps right now. And I do it now. And I get 50 maps displayed on the world map. Italy is still in the center because it's selected, but all the other sheets are also opened at their correct spot. So now we have 50 pages open. This icon says we have 50 pages. Uh, nothing is pinned because they belong to the same atlas and they will go away once I go to a different map. So nothing is pinned, but all is visible at the same time. And these sheets of maps behave like windows on your desktop. So you can click any of those maps, they come to front. And if they cover too much, you can option click the map, it goes to the back. You can select a map and hit the delete key, then they are removed from the from the current view. Now it's gone. Let's move in back to, to Europe once again. Um, so this part of Russia, I remove it right now. We don't need Scandinavia. I want to see the uh, more central countries down here. No Africa. So right now we have still plenty of maps, but we can see uh, all the maps um, cover their specific area, and it's easier to to move from from Spain to France in in four maps um, to Italy. Somewhere in here is uh, well, what is it? Uh, Switzerland, Austria. Yeah, it's Switzerland somewhere here. Come to front, it's even the, the south part of, of Germany, if I see it correctly. Yes, it is. So Switzerland is in here. So, sorry, Switzerland, Austria, and southern areas of Germany. Um, there's one command which is kind of neat. I mean, all commands are cool, but this one is especially used quite often because the title of the current map it has also a shortcut key, the H, which is the home position for a map. So I can always press the H for zooming to the default location for a specific map. I, I click this map and say H and it moves here. And I can go into this map, say H, and it moves to the, to the Baltic Sea and to the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. Always quite, quite handy and useful to orient yourself. Um, back to Italy and say, well, it was nice, it was impressive, but now I want to focus just on one map again. That means I can go to the I icon above the, the pin icon, which says right now I have 45 maps. Shortcut key is the dot, like the dot and the I in the center. It says, well, just display one map. Italy is selected, it has the blue border. I click the I icon, display a single map, and all the other maps will be removed. And press an H again to zoom, to smoothly zoom to the um, Italy map from the beginning. Well, in fact, it's not the map from the beginning, it was the second map of, it, map of Italy. Uh, so just for completeness, the visited maps, B, um, are collected and assembled in this view. It's quite a lot, so the entire atlas is in here, but in the beginning uh, we started with this version of Italy. And let me now show and demonstrate the, the pin feature. Um, so w once I pin this version of Italy, this map, it's pinned now, and I open another map, so the other map of Italy, 
both maps are, are visible. So the first map of Italy won't be removed if it's pinned. This map of um, Italy is also pinned right now, so I can change between two versions of the Italy maps to compare uh, different versions for the same area in the world quite easily. Without the pin, the other map would go away. So uh, there's a pin all maps, shift P, and remove all pins, which is in alt P. Do it now, all pins removed. Now if I change the map, the other will go away. Eventually. Um, to explain what just happened, the, 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 in the background there's a garbage collector uh, which says, well, this, this map is no longer needed and once in a while they are purged and removed from the user interface. That's why there was a little hiccup a second ago. So, um, where we've not been yet. So let's go to the search function. The search function below here is a, f uh, uh, is a search for any city. So let's search for Imola. Imola is in the north of, of Italy. Hide the other map. Well, it's, it's kind of crowded here, but there is Imola. Here's the racing track of Imola, which is in fact almost as large as the old city of Imola. If I look for maps for this area, uh, search. I get maps that fit this area. Um, lots of maps cover the north part of Italy, of course, but the first map is from actually Leonardo da Vinci, uh, who had the um, task to create this map. So he did a tremendous job in 1502 um, to plot this map of Imola. Uh, more than 500 years ago, 520 years ago. And if you compare to the layout today, it's, it's really impressive and astonishing what Leonardo did in those times. So it's, it's really, really a good fit and, and, and an impressive word what Leonardo did in creating this city plan for, for Imola. Um, maybe remove the, the satellite view, disable the satellite view, go to the day mode, and then you can see again how good the fit is, the good the fit, the matches between old maps and today. Well, here's a place to Leonardo's times um, that was open today. We have some buildings down here, but otherwise uh, the entire layout is still there and can be inspected how the city has changed, or in this case has not changed over the years. Or some, some ruins of this tower are still visible here, and there probably it was a real tower with some water around. The water is gone. I switch off the sat mode, so there's no water anymore. It's just, just grass, so everything's green, no water anymore. But the, uh, the castle with the four rocks and the towers outside are, are still there in the city today. Um, for Imola, there's just one map. And I've um, promised to you that there are more toolbars than the main toolbar, the view toolbar, and the memory toolbar to the left. So let's go to Amsterdam right now. So the blue pin is is, is caused by, by the search command. Um, Chrono cursor a little later. So here's Amsterdam. And again, I start the search command. Uh, the, the K, by the way, close right again. Um, the K, by the way, is, is from the German Kartentisch. The F um, is a mnemonic for the English find command. So both, both keys work in this case. K for Kartentisch, a table of maps. Uh, F for find maps. That's why I press or use, why I am used to press the K instead of the F. So let's see what we have for Amsterdam. Plenty of maps um, that show the history of the city. Um, and now because there are several phases of um, the um, creation and the urban development of Amsterdam, all these maps have been lined up down here in the city bar, which is the one, two, 
three, the fourth toolbar in the chronoscope that shows the urban development of a bunch of cities where several maps are available for different decades and centuries. Um, one click here brings the proper orientation for the map and a click on the first icon shows all the city maps once again in the map selector um, ordered by time. So it starts in 1540 with this lovely map which is yet again kind of uh, twisted compared to the common north direction but it's a, it's a wonderful well, it, it, it's, it's more a painting than a map, in fact. And some of these buildings, most of these buildings, oh, well, some, some, most, a majority of these buildings um, is still, uh, still, still, is still standing in, in Amsterdam today. And now let's, let's, let's use this chronoscope, uh, this chrono cursor as an example, how it can be, be used. So we have this, this wonderful tower castle somewhere here so let's move out for a second with the age so um, here is the river Amstel this is the city this is the old city as we see it today so this is really the original part of the old old city of Amsterdam and here uh, we have a kind of gate so let's see what's happening today on this place I use the chrono cursor to position it next to the gate and open it and see what's in there. So um, did I mention the, the chrono link? Anyway, I do it right now again. So you can copy the chrono link, um, which is an URL which you can share with your friends and colleagues. Yes, I remember I told you before. Um, the next one is the permalink for the map, in this case more an image like a map, where this is coming from. So visit the library page where this map is coming from. I click now and you can see that this map came from the Amsterdam Museum. Page is loading, there it is, the Amsterdam Museum, which tells us more about this map, more background and, and all the history of this lovely map. All the maps in the chronoscope, by the way, are public domain or use a Creative Commons license. So everything is taken from the original archives and libraries and there's no copyright infringement happening here at the chronoscope. Everything is, is open um, to, to access for, for you. So close this page again. This map is coming from the Amsterdam Museum. What else? The next one opens the uh, map in full screen, so not georeference on a page, but really 100% um, of this page in a new browser tab. Uh, this one is search, you know already. The next section is um, a hub to other map services. So you can open this spot in Apple Maps, in OpenStreetMap, in Bing Maps, in Google Maps. And it's also possible to jump to the Google Street View. And wow, here we are. We are really standing next to this this wonderful old gate, uh, which is no longer a gate nowadays, but it's still um, at this this place in the in the center of of Amsterdam today. And another command inside the Victoria context menu is links to Wikipedia. So here is opening Wikipedia nearby, which shows sorted by distance from uh, the position of the chrono cursor um, relevant articles in Wikipedia. Um, first one is the new markt. We are standing on the new markt with the chrono cursor. The next one is De Waag in Amsterdam. And this explains really the history of this former um, gate of the old city of Amsterdam, which later become the Waag, uh, De Waag. Um, and which is still standing today in, in full, full beauty on this place. Close. So to sum it up, the um, chrono disc, the chrono cursor, the yellow disc, the chrono cursor, 
always provides additional information for the location where it is positioned. It, it really depends on the orientation. If you have the satellite mode and go to um, Google Maps, then the satellite mode in Google Maps is also enabled if you start from the street view level with the maps outline you get more the the classical google maps approach which is true for all the map applications so the view settings on the right here are carried over um, to the maps application for microsoft google and apple to display a really similar first impression once you jump there um, okay this was just the beginning of amsterdam beautiful beginning but the back to the uh, city bar down here it's really a collection sorted by time how the city has developed so i will go through these maps right now um, the next one is quite similar to the first one uh, more map like but but still 3d buildings it's a little bit blurry right now the blue bar blue blinking bar says that um, data is loaded on demand, um, so now we have a sharp and crisp image, and here is our gate from before. So I can flip between these two versions now uh, quite fast, because the, the data has been loaded locally and cached, so it's easy to quickly jump between the two views. Um, the next one, 1606. shows a little bit more of Amsterdam being built, so it's not really the full circle right now, 1690. 1720. So the, the well, it's not north, but the, the upper section of the, the city has been uh, built meanwhile, plus 10 years right now. We're going to the, to the left side. It's not north because uh, now north is top, so this is actually south. Um, going back 50 years, go to the original orientation, so top is south. Between 1619 and 1720, the south side of Amsterdam is being built, so you see all the new buildings over here. 1730, so if this is south and this is east, this area is being constructed 1740, moving out a little bit, 1850, 1934, so all the harbor areas are, so on the, on the north side of the city, the harbor areas on the last map for Amsterdam is 1944. Here we go, and this is finally um, the common north orientation of a map. And if you compare the Amsterdam from 1944 with today, um, of course the, the city is much much larger meanwhile because these other areas, the suburban areas, are also part of the, the city. But the core city could be, or the development of the core city, could be wonderfully um, inspected by this Kronos cursor down here. Now we come to the final part of this webinar, which is how to use filters in Chronoscope World. So let's zoom out, dark mode, and open the outlines mode, which shows all of the maps that are available in Chronoscope World, which is quite a lot. So the question is how to, well, find your way to the map that really is of interest to you. Um, the outline mode offers a bunch of filters. Most prominently at the bottom is the time frame, which limits the lower and upper year for the maps to be displayed. So if we just want to display the maps between 1600, 1600 and 1630, this is the way how to uh, just focus on these maps, which are just 45 maps in this area. It's possible to move this time frame through the years. If I move right, I get more, more recent maps. And as you can see, the user interface updates the available maps for that time frame quite rapidly. 
reset. Um, another filter is the scale of the map. So by default, all the scales are shown. But if I use the left slider over here, I can say, no, not all maps, just the maps which cover continents. So I'm really on the, on the top, uh, on the f first level above all, so which is this one, the continental. If I do the search right now, I just see the maps which really cover the entire globe. Um, if I move down this slider down to um, city level, somewhere here, and use the uh, find command again, I just get city maps, even just the districts for the harbor of Hamburg um, and other really maps that just cover limited areas of the world. So these two sliders, the scale on the left, and the time slider on the bottom, are really very powerful to limit the amount of maps that are currently active um, for, for search. Um, um, another, um, another filter is the signature filter. So all the maps come from several institutions worldwide and the um, identifier of each map, the first two letters, indicate where the map is coming from. So here we have an SU, which means um, this map is coming from Stanford University. Um, we have an, uh, boop, 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 a, a DK, where is a DK? I want to say a DK. Anyway, I want to show just the maps from DK, which is the library from, from Denmark, the Royal Library from Denmark. So I go to the signature filter, say I want to just filter for maps coming from uh, the Danish library, the Royal Danish Library, and get 300 and uh, 76 maps just coming from the library in Denmark. If I zoom in, of course, I get more dense um, uh, distribution of maps for, for Denmark itself, but also Greenland, for example, and Iceland is covered by the Danish library. And another way to filter the maps is a full text search. So if I use this text filter um, function down here and enter something like harbor or railroad or telegraphy or transport, I get just maps that have this key string in their title. So as an example right now, I enter phantom and get just six maps which have phantom in their title. So what's this? Um, I use the find to visualize what's here and with the hashtag phantom or the the name phantom in the title here's a hash phantom inside the title i get maps with islands that are not really islands in reality because if you you look below the island of california you see it's not an island island has never california has never been an island but this map from 1650 1650 um shows clearly that California is something where you can sail around, which is not quite the truth. Okay, thank you. I leave it at that and let me sum up what we just saw. To sum it up, the Chronoscope is a web application that provides access to 6,800 old maps that come from more than 66 um, galleries and libraries worldwide. They are provided under open GLAM conditions, which means they are either in the public domain or use a Creative Commons license, and they are interoperable in a sense that they can be displayed inside the chronoscope. The user interface offers fast browsing and deep zooming to all of these maps, and 
collections of maps are offered as groups um, for atlases and city plans. That means each map is not just treated as its own, but it's also presented in the context of other maps that belong to the same city or to the same cartographer, even though the maps might not be stored at the same library. The Chronoscope has multi-map tools, so default is um, just one map, but you have tools to show several map at once. Either they belong to the same atlas or you use the tools as I've just shown, like the pin mode to say, well, I want to keep this map up even though I, I have other maps next to it. The interface is optimized for an elegant browsing experience, so the tools are really arranged around the um, edges of the browser windows, which leaves as much space as possible for the old maps in the center. Um, dynamic queries are applied in the filter mode, so once I adjust any of these filters in the um, outline and filter mode, the set of available maps is updated immediately. And all the commands have keyboard shortcuts. That means that you can use either the toolbars with the mouse key or um, finger touches on touch displays, or you can use keyboard shortcuts to really change all the aspects um, of the chronoscope by using the keyboard, which is really a fast way to interact with the chronoscope. Finally, the Chrono Cursor is a unique feature inside Chronoscope World. It offers access to other geo services, like other map services and other information databases, as well as Wikipedia on a context aware uh, fashion. So wherever you open the context menu, the Victoria's menu, you get a specific set of application that is relevant just for that spot on the map. Thank you for attending this webinar. Thank you and happy time traveling. Bye-bye.